Hello and welcome to this lecture on MuPad. So MuPad, which is a feature by MATLAB, is powered by the symbolic math toolbox of MATLAB. So if you're really not into, you know, programming and you're lazy to write some MATLAB code as well, so let me show you an example. So instead of you having to go and declare an anonymous function as such, you know, x squared plus five times x, right? And then you have to plot, I don't know, from zero to two, maybe you get something like this. So this required like, I don't know, 10 seconds of typing. Well, you can do so easily with a single line on MuPad. And let me show you what I mean. So if you want to open MuPad, all you have to do is type in MuPad and you have to make sure you already have MuPad. So type in help MuPad. If the following information pops up, then you have it installed in your computer. If not, then I recommend you to install it, to follow the instructions on this website and to install it. It's paid, of course. It's not a free feature by MATLAB. So another way to make sure that it's installed, you go here to the apps and you have it right here. MuPad, Notebook, Perform and Document, Symbolic Computations as well. And MATLAB has really a lot of toolboxes. Here are some of them, okay? There are a lot, really. We've got neural networks, signal analysis, and so forth. So if you want to open MuPad using your command window, you can do so by typing MuPad, and you get a notebook in front of you. So notebook, so it's, if you've ever used Mathematica by Wolfram, this should look really familiar to you. Let's do what we did previously here by plotting this function on MuPad. So all I have to do is type in plot the function. So the function is x squared plus 5x, hit enter, and you get the plot right beneath it without having to define, you know, the x-axis and so forth. All you have to do is symbolically define your equation as such. This is one feature by MuPad. Another one is, let's say you're in a hurry and you have a, I don't know, a big equation that you would like to expand or simplify, right? So you can do so using, you go here to general math, you've got simplify, for example. So simplify, it pops up the code right here for you. So the code responsible for simplifying an expression is simplify. So let's say you have x squared plus 5x minus 5x, which is obviously x squared. So there you have x squared for you. So I showed you a really easy example. Let's put in a more complex um, notation. So x cubed plus 5x squared possibly plus, I don't know, 6 minus lin x, 5x minus 6 plus maybe x times x minus 4x. Let's say I have this expression right here and I would like to simplify it. So you have an editor right here, which is, I forgot the multiplication over here. So run, and this is the above equation in its simplest form. Let's see what other stuff we have. We've got evaluate maybe. So this guy right here converts to a floating point number. So 5.343. You've also got other functionalities like expand an equation, for example. Let's say you have it factored as such, x plus 3 times x squared plus 5x. There you go. You have it expanded right here. Now, all those are boring stuff, really. Um, to really grab the essence of what MuPad could do, let's, let's, let's run a real-life example. So I've got this example right here for you, which is a physics example, of course. So it's a differential equation of second order as such. And this is a real life example of an ideal mass spring damper system. Let's say you have a system, an object of mass M, and it, you know, it's connected to a wall via spring that has a constant K. And, you know, you have this other effect, which is the damping coefficient defined by or captured by the value C, okay? So let's simulate this behavior on MuPad. So I'm going to erase everything as such. And by the way, by the way, you could write notes over here. So first, I'm going to define the differential equation governing 
the motion of a mass spring damper system. And it's not called a notepad for nothing. So really, you could write notes over here and run some simulations over here. Now, when it's black like this, when you have the font, by default it's this font, the color is black and everything, this is a note, meaning that it will not run. It's a comment in programming terms, okay? If you want an equation, you go here to this pi over here, this pi symbol, insert calculation, and you press it. And now MuPad is telling you I'm ready to receive equations. So first of all, let's define the equation I have right here in terms of MuPad, okay? So I'll keep this over here. I'll shrink this because I don't need that much space for the moment. Let's first define the differential equation. So the equation is given as such. So F1 is going to be my equation and I use a colon equal to define my equation. So this is an ordinary differential equation. So I use the ODE function by MuPad. If I hover here, I see that ODE receives two parameters. The first one is the differential equation and the second one is the symbol. It's the variable of the differential equation. So first I'll go over here and open and close curly brackets. That's my first parameter. And my second parameter is going to be the variable x of t. Now let's define the equation. Let's define it. It's n times, as you can see here, n times x double prime square, x double prime of t, plus k times x of t, plus c times x prime of t. And over here you can pass the initial conditions, which are x of 0 is 0 and x prime of 0 is 1, right here. So you separate the equation from the initial conditions by a comma inside the curly brackets, okay? So x of 0 is 0 and x prime of 0 is 1, okay? This should do it. And there you go. Once you see such a message, it means that MuPad has successfully saved this ODE inside equation F1. Let's give some, you know, values to M, K, and C because they're constants. So let's say I want my M to be 10, C to be 1, and K to be 10. So how could I do that? We define another equation, which is F2, colon equal. And right now you will call subs. And what subs is, is that it only substitutes values to an object, okay? So, in other words, the equation you have, which is F1. Right, so F1 would be my first parameter, and all other parameters would be the values I would like to substitute, which is M by 10, C by 1, and K by 10, right? So run, and there you have it. You can see that the values have been substituted properly, okay, here. Here you have the 10, here you have 1, and here you have 10. The last thing you want to do is solve your equation. So F3 is solve F2. So you just want to solve your F2 equation. And you get here this complicated expression, which is the solution to your equation, which is a function of t, x of t. Now, normally what you'd want to do, if you're here and watching this video, you'd like to plot this equation right? So how do you plot that? You could go ahead and define your x-axis. So we're going to animate here what's going on. We're going to, you know, create an animating plot, right? To see how x behaves with time. So for that, you'd call the point 2D, which only plots 2D points, right? As a first parameter, you have your x, and the second parameter, you have your y. Here goes my t-axis, and here, since f3 is my solution, I'll call f3 of 1. And the second parameter would tell me my t-axis. So where would I like to view my t-axis? From 0 to, let's say, 50. That's it. Those are my points on the grid. So you can go ahead and plot your p. All you see is a point right here jumping. So this is the value of x, which is f3, at each given time. So this plot is not really nice, right? So you can't like, oh, I, this is not like good for the eyes because all you see is a ball like point jumping up and down and yeah, that's it. So it would be better to have a line tracking the location of this point. So you can do that 
can go back here. I'll define a C, which is also plot, but this time it's a curve. So two columns curve. It's a 2D curve, which will have the same parameters first parameter. So if you go here and hover over the curve 2D, you could see that it takes as first parameter your X and Y, right? X and Y. And then you define your T, which goes from zero till A, and I'll tell you why. And then your A goes from zero till 50, which is your X axis. So why is that? It's for animation purposes. So if I hit enter, I defined my C and now I'll plot P and C together in the same graph. So I did a mistake right here. I should insert a column. I didn't have it, so hit enter to update. And now plot P and C together on the same graph. Now you're going to get something like this. If you expand this figure right here, you click on the or next to the figure you get an animation slider right here. So it dictates where are you at the moment on this figure. So this right here is X of T. So we're plotting X of T and we're seeing really how it's being animated. So if you hold this slider and you slide it, you could see how this trajectory follows. So let's like, if you want to have a better visualization of this figure, you can increase the T limit to 500, hit enter to update, and over here again, hit enter to update, go next to your plot P and C, hit enter. As you can see right here, you have a 500. Now click next to the figure, and you can see it all the way here, okay? So you can hit the slider. No, you cannot, because we just plotted it, so. You have to wait till it finishes, then you can, you know, have access to the slider so that you slide it as much as you want. Okay, you can stop and then play with the slider. So, you know, with 500, you can't really see what's going on because, you know, it's like almost zero after 100. So let's, you know, limit this to 100 and make sure that you hit enter after you update. Still not running, you should click on the figure. Make sure you can see this slider and stop button. So stop, and now you could like play with the slider. Okay. Okay, so this is really this is a really nice feature by Newpad. You could animate your plots. In MATLAB, you would have to write a bit of code to do the same functionality. Over here, you just wrote like two lines of code to plot this, or three lines with the plot P and C plot this figure. Now if you want something more fun, you want to visualize how this box is moving in 3D, you can do so. Okay, so so now let's really visualize how the box is moving with time. So you know this plot right here just tells me the position of the box with respect to time. Now let's say we really want to animate what's going on. So you can do that. So first you'd want to, you know, you have to be a bit good with animations and stuff. So you, you'd want to define a line in 3D. Let's say my line is the spring. This will be my spring. I'll leave a note here. So in case you're wondering why I put those double columns, it's because this object, which is line 3D, is contained within the plot library. You can think about it that way. So, you know, my plot line 3D is going to take, it's a line segment in 3D, it's going to take two parameters, and the rest are optional, but you have to pass it two parameters, and they're going to be the start and ending points. So let's say I would like to start it from 0, 0, 0 0.1 and end it at, say, at F3, 1 plus 1, 0.1. I would like to simulate this from 0 to 50. You could also pass a line width. Do we have a line width here? Let's check. Yes, we do. And the color, you can color your spring. Let's say I want it to be, you have all those colors. Let's say I want an azul color. So yeah. This is my spring. So I think I'll call it spring, it's better. So enter, this is my spring, good. Now I'd like to have a certain surface. My surface is a surface. 
So as such, Newpad has made it really easy for us. So whatever you want, whatever you're thinking about, there's a command right there for you to use. <laughs> My surface is going to, you know, span X, Y, and it's on the it's on the X, Y plane. So if you have an X, Y, Z uh, plane in your imagination, so we're on the X, Y plane at the moment. So we can hover over here. You can see that we have to define how our plane looks like in the first parameter as first parameter and in the second and third parameters we define where the limits of our plane i'd want to visualize my x-axis going from zero to two my y-axis going from minus one to one and you can also pass stuff like fill color direction set it to one for the moment and there's one thing missing which is my box right so my box is again a box the box in 3d you also define its limits so it's starting and ending edges if you will so f3 1 let's push it by 0 0.75 0 0.25 and 0 and end so i'll just copy paste this portion right here to here and i'll push it to 1.25 maybe so those really you should play around with them to come up with the correct values if you want so 0.25 and 0.2, okay, looks good. T is going from zero to 50. Let's give it the color of gray, enter. So this is my box. This is the equation that's going to, you know, render or plot my box. Now I define my spring in 3D. I define my surface, my box. Now I need one more command to animate what's going on, okay? So now I'm ready to plot. Let me pass it the objects, object by object. So this is my plot right here. And the first thing I'd want to do is open a coordinate system in 3D that contains the spring, the surface, and the box. Then you could set a viewing, you know, the Z min. I'll set it to zero. Let's see what we get with this. You could see that there's actually a box moving forward and backward and it's damping with time. So if I wait sufficiently long enough, it's going to stop moving. That's good, but I don't, oh yeah, do you see the spring? It's over here. So let me enlarge this a bit. Okay, so you can rotate as such and slide as such so let's say i'm i want to view this for a longer period of time so i'll go here and set 50 to 100 enter and over here as well right so go here hit enter click on the figure and you can see that it's moving and it's slowing down with time so as you can see slower 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 and it stops so yeah this is really what you can do with new path this is just one simple example right and really there's a lot of more other stuff you can do with MuPad. you can simulate dc motors harmonic oscillators you can also model an aircraft with wing loads any physical system or electrical system any system you have in mind you can come here and simulate it as easy as three lines of code or symbolic codes, if you will. So yeah, that's it for this lecture. It's not really a lecture. It's just showing what the power of MuPad, what really it could do. So if you want more information about MuPad, you can find it here in this link right here. Yeah, that's about it. I'll see you in the next one.